Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today's video is another episode in the Coral Island Diaries series. For this episode, I'll be highlighting some of what the team has been working on for Coral Island behind the scenes throughout the month of June. The developer diaries are full of information. There is so much to go through, so let's just get right into it. In the last official monthly update, the team shared that they have been completely revamping the diving experience on Coral Island. They're creating an underwater open world diving map complete with sea creature NPCs. In June, the team has continued to work on animating and preparing Grantle, or Grandpa Turtle, along with what appears to be another sea creature NPC. This was of course redacted, but I'm thinking it may be another turtle who is part of their squad who roams the 10 meter depths. They have also finished implementing the diving wildlife at the 10 meter depths and have added sea rock variations. I don't exactly know what wildlife we can expect or if the sea rocks will serve any function outside of decoration. Perhaps they will provide various resources such as ore, gemstones, or minerals, but regardless, I'm looking forward to experiencing this brand new underwater world, and I'm hoping that we'll see more of it in the next official update. And of course, the bottom of the ocean wouldn't be complete without the Merfolk Kingdom. Despite not seeing any hint of the Merfolk in the latest trailer, I was excited to see that the team has been sculpting both Agung and Denali's character models. And I'm wondering if we'll finally get to see something Merfolk related soon. I hope we're gonna get an up close and personal look of both Agung and Denali's 3D models like we have for some of the land walking NPCs. So fingers crossed on that one. So now we're gonna pivot for a minute and talk monkeys. So I actually feel like there's something meaningful going on with monkeys on Coral Island. Bear with me for a moment. There was an oddly large number of notes spanning across the month of June about some sort of orangutan. This orangutan seems fairly important. A lot of the notes are very similar to the descriptors they use when they talk about working on different character models for important important NPCs. So it just seems like maybe the orangutan is sort of like an on land grantle, if you will. So I'm not really sure. All I know is there are definitely enough orangutan notes to raise a couple eyebrows. That's for sure. So these notes were also accompanied by a whole lot of other notes about monkeys, like adding monkey variations, adding more monkeys to the forest. What do you think the significance of these monkeys could be? So the team has also been working on a wide variety of locations around the island this past month and we can really only guess which ones they'll decide to show off next. They've been designing some sort of redacted tech lab, which I found particularly interesting since we already know about Ling's lab and this space wouldn't need to be redacted. So this must be a separate lab, perhaps at Pufferfish or maybe even in the Merfolk Kingdom? They've also been designing the interior of the greenhouse, which will be on our farm, which I'm definitely looking forward to seeing. They've also been blocking out the back backyard of the Coral Inn. I hope it has a pool. It also looks like they're working on the concept for the museum exterior, so I'm wondering if that design is to match the one we've seen on the map of Starlet Town, or if they're going to be changing the exterior design away from that. I was really excited to see that they're working on the library, which is inside the community center, and so far we've only seen a very, very small glimpse of it. They're adding new shelves and new books and even implementing a library system. I hope that we can access notes in the library that can share tips, secrets, lore, new languages, and more. Information that can help us learn about the mysteries of Coral Island and progress us through the game. The team was also working on a sign concept for a redacted village. Is this village in reference to something underwater or maybe in the upper portion of the Coral Island map, perhaps in the desert area? There was also a note about a redacted cemetery. Now, I didn't think that the cemetery was a mystery at this point since we can clearly see it on the map. 
Maybe it's the significance of it that is still unrevealed, or perhaps there is another cemetery located elsewhere, like potentially in the redacted village. They've also been working on redacted tree concepts. I'm thinking this has to do with the mysterious looking tree that we saw in the latest trailer behind Sam's general store. In my trailer breakdown video, one of you mentioned that the tree we saw could have a sacred boundary marker on it to denote that this tree has a spirit inside. Another one of you suggested that perhaps the tree starts off dead and as you restore and revitalize the island, it comes back to life. Either way, I'm now more convinced that this tree has something going on with it that's more than what meets the eye and I'm totally here for it. So as for NPCs, the team has been continuing to work on the mystery characters and giving all NPCs unique activity animations. I am so looking forward to seeing those new NPCs and just a small piece of news is that it was confirmed on the discord that we will be getting bios for all the new npcs like we did for the original slate of villagers however they will not be available publicly until sometime after they've been fully developed and hashed out and i cannot wait for that as for unique activity animations for the npcs i'm hoping that they're very specific to each character so for example we have seen macy taking photographs i could imagine dinda working with wood ben meditating leah doing yoga or checking her social media page and Eva baking her favorite sweets at home. One of these activity notes actually had a duck emoji with it, which I found quite odd, especially since we're talking about NPCs, not animals. But I wonder if one of the characters has a pet duck or likes to feed the resident ducks of Coral Island on a regular basis. I'm not sure, but I can't wait to find out. Speaking of ducks, they have been texturing some cute animals like lizards and rabbits. I'm thinking these are the player pets, since they don't usually reference animals as being cute in the diaries, if they're just part of the general wildlife of Coral Island. Now we've got to talk about this. The nasty looking oil spill that shocked everyone to their core in the latest trailer for Coral Island. Now the team actually has continued to work on updating the oil spill and working on oil spill material. So I think unfortunately this scene was not so much a cinematic foreshadowing of what could happen with pufferfish on Coral Island, but rather what will happen. I think this is going to be the focal point of the main storyline on Coral Island, and I am so nervous and curious to find out more. We really need to save the island from pufferfish, okay? So just a couple of final notes that I personally find interesting are first that the team has been working on implementing an achievement system. So for those of you who are achievement hunters, you'll be very happy to hear this. They're also working on controller support, which should be coming in the final version of the alpha, which is just around the corner and launching on July 11th. So I know this will be very helpful for those of you who have trouble with playing keyboard and mouse, who can't play it at all, or just prefer to play controller. So those were the main highlights from the developer diaries for the month of June. And now it's time for your top comments. So I've been posting a lot of videos lately, but these comments are from my latest Coral Island video, which was a breakdown of the extended portions of the latest Coral Island trailer. The first comment is from Samur, and they said that this town looks so alive and they can't wait to explore it. They also wonder if there's more of an open world, as in places where you can go to forage. And so I agree, I love how alive the town looks. And I know that foraging is going to be likely a fairly substantial component of this game, so I imagine there would be a lot of nice areas to go foraging when we take a look at that aerial shot of the cherry blossom festival by the lake. I'm wondering if when the festival is not running, that would be a really nice open area to go foraging. It also seems like there's going to be some forests and such, so I'm sure those would be other great areas for foraging, but I can't wait to find out. I love foraging in games, so I'm very excited for this, for sure. Persona said that they love how the map seems to be huge, and that's always been something they feel is kind of a letdown with farming games. And I agree, this this map looks huge from what we've seen so far. I think it's even bigger than what we know of right now, so I can't wait to explore every corner of the island. I think those mounts are really going to come in handy, the fast travel systems, all of that. They also further said that they wondered if there would be any other NPCs that would come into the school uh, to give themed classes to the kids. So for example, Ling and Surya could go to the school and talk about the work they're doing at the lab. This is definitely something I've thought of before and I really hope is the case because as we know of 
right now, Randy is like the main and potentially only teacher at the school. And maybe us as the player could even give our own lecture to the kids. I think that'd be really sweet. The final top comment for today is from Malati. And they said that the two decor pieces that I was uncertain about are called Leisung, which is used for pounding rice, and Pikulan, which are containers connected by a bamboo staff that you can carry on your shoulders. Thank you so much for helping me out with that one. I really wish that I could highlight every single one of your comments. You are all the sweetest and I so sincerely appreciate all of the incredible love and support that you've been giving me lately, especially on the channel. So thank you all so, so much for showing your support and leaving your thoughts on all of my videos. And before I leave you today, let's take a look at today's amazing fan art. Today's amazing fan art is the most amazing art of Sus Chicken and Taco by CI. As soon as I saw this piece, I knew it had to be in one of my videos. You all know I'm a huge fan of the Sus Chicken and Taco is like the sweetest dog in the world. So seeing the two of them together in this beautiful art style with this beautiful color palette is just so cute. You all know how much I love animals, so this was just so sweet to see. So be sure to show her some love in the comments down below, and thank you so, so much for sharing your amazing art with us. Well, there you have it, friends. Those were the highlights from the developer diaries for the month of June. I'm really looking forward to the next monthly update, which of course I will post about as soon as I can when it drops. So be sure your notifications are on. With all that being said, I so look forward to hearing from you in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care.